There are many in today's society who would have had low expectations for Patrick Henry Hughes. Some of them would have argued he should have never been born, and they couldn't have been more wrong. Stay with us as we give you a glimpse into the life of this remarkable young man. When Patrick and Patricia Hughes decided to start a family, they thought they had everything planned out. They planned for a March baby to coincide with both of their birthdays, and everything went perfectly throughout the pregnancy. But when their son Patrick Henry was born on March 10th, it wasn't the delivery they were expecting. Patrick was born and there was a little extra commotion in the delivery room and I remember hearing one of the doctors or one of the nurses say something about multiple anomalies. And I had no idea what multiple anomalies were. I just thought, yeah, must be fingers and toes. That sounds good. And, uh, but then as the minutes and the, you know, the hours began to unfold, we started to learn more about Patrick and uh, uh, what he had, the pterygia syndrome, which is a tightening in his elbows and his knees that keeps him from straightening his limbs. 180 degrees are always bent at 90 or, or more. And, uh, and then in, we eventually learned that uh, he was born with bilateral anophthalmia, which was the absence of eyes. His eyes just didn't grow. So it was quite, uh, quite unexpected and, and, and quite a surprise. And, you know, we loved our son regardless of, of, you know, whether he came into the world as we expected him to. Uh, we loved him just as much and we just decided we were going to give him every opportunity that we had planned on giving him had he been born as we expected. And what a journey it has been. Well, what was this young man like growing up? He was just who he was. It, he didn't care that, that we picked him up and put him in the stroller or we carried him from point A to point B or we rolled him in his wheelchair. I mean, as far as he could see, half the world was, was like that. He didn't know, so it didn't matter. I think you tell that story where you didn't know you were blind until four or five years old. Right, that's true. Um, when I was at one of my uh, daycares, there was this, I was playing with this little electronic keyboard they had for me and uh, this girl came up to me. She said, you know, Patrick, did you know you were blind? And I said, no. She said, do you know why you're blind? And I said, no. And she said, because you were born that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Back to the keyboard. Yeah. And, and it discussion. wasn't something that we, you know, tried to shelter him from. It was just, just not what we spent our, we didn't spend our days telling Patrick he was blind. We weren't really, tough on Patrick, but we didn't allow a whole lot of weakness because we knew no one else would. I mean, the older he gets, the tougher it's going to get on him, so we didn't allow the, I can't do this, I can't, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to have to figure out some way to do it. Um, with all of our sons. Yeah, yeah, and that's with all of them. And, and the other two, a, a lot of um, people have, have concerns that they were left behind, I guess, or... Didn't get as much did, attention yeah, as Patrick did. But but that's not the case. My, my, all three of my boys have huge, huge self-esteem and egos. Um, Cameron thinks everything's about him. He's the baby. And, and Jesse's a, a humble, nice, well-adjusted young man. And never jealous of Patrick growing up. Patrick was a normal brother for them. When we return, we'll hear about Patrick Henry's gift for music and how it led to a unique opportunity at the University of Louisville. Look around you. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. This Emmy Award-winning show tackles challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, and adoption, and shows every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. Patrick Henry's love for music began when he was only four months old. His mother was out shopping and Patrick Sr. found himself alone with his newborn son. Dad was excited for the alone time, that is, until his infant son started crying. I couldn't get Patrick to quit crying for anything. And finally, 
I, I had the idea to lay him on top of that piano and play. And so I took the little baby and I laid him up on top of the, the upright piano we had that was against the wall where he wouldn't fall. And I began to play and as soon as I played, he got quiet. I mean, instantly he turned, turned down the sound. Now, as a 26 year old man, I thought, hey, I'm pretty good. <laughs> but what do we think now? Well, we look back on it now, we think maybe it brought me to a whole new level of terror. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, and that's kind of how I learned that, oh, maybe that's why mom kept pushing me to violin and piano lessons all those years, because this was what I was going to do with my son. And the big light bulb went off, if you will. And then, so then I would play piano and my wife would, uh, hand me Patrick and I would hold Patrick on my knees, you know, with my arms around him and I would introduce him to the panel that way as when he was less than a year old. And one day I played three notes at random and I think he was maybe nine or 10 months old. He found those three notes, trial and error, and played them back to me one after the other. Some of the notes, some of the sounds that the keys made reminded me of different voices. For example, you know, I'd hit a key and it reminded me of the voices of my parents or my grandparents or, you know, a, a voice I might hear in a public building. And through that, uh, basically, I learned what note made what sound, I think. So when did you start playing the trumpet then? I started playing the trumpet uh, when I was in fourth grade. I just wanted to experience with another instrument. Over the years, Patrick Henry grew proficient at both instruments. After graduating from high school, he decided to enroll at the University of Louisville. Prior to starting classes, he inquired about joining the pep band. Unfortunately, a policy was in place requiring students to also participate in the marching band if they wanted a spot in the pep band. No stranger to overcoming obstacles, Patrick and his dad sought out the marching band director, Dr. Greg Byrne. Dr. Byrne insisted Patrick could participate in the marching band, but instead of just playing on the sidelines, Dr. Byrne wanted to find a way for Patrick to participate in the whole experience. After talking with his dad, uh, more so than Patrick, his dad and I sat down about what we needed to do to make, to make this work for Patrick. Um, and we realized we're gonna keep Patrick in the wheelchair. He needed to, be, needed to do that. He needed somebody to push him. His dad at the time was not ready to let Patrick go to someone else. Uh, it was a very finesse um, situation for Patrick to be pushed in the wheelchair. So his dad decided he's gonna push. Uh, I wrote the drill in a way that Patrick um, could be included in the drill so it's, the, the maneuvers weren't so complicated. I uh, recorded the music for Patrick rather than give him sheet music so he can listen to it and then play. Uh, things like that. Patrick Henry's bandmates rose to the challenges his participation presented. They helped him with music, the formations, and treated him like any other band member. But it wasn't all fun. Band member Whitney Tillman remembers some of the obstacles Patrick and his father had to face. Our uh, first field that we had when they first got there was horrible for us. So can you even imagine wheeling through this field? It was pretty difficult. We had to stop a few times and maybe reroute things, but uh, we just picked up and just kept going. But they, uh, they worked pretty good together. The trumpet section that we have and have always had are amazing. So um, they accepted him as one of their own and they just worked together. Whatever they needed to tweak, they just did it. When you were out there in that marching band for the first time, Patrick, what was that like? My wheelchair in its present condition does not roll very well on grass. It was a little scary, but uh, in the end, uh, a good friend of ours uh, found a way to adapt some, we call them turf tires for my wheelchair. Uh, we got them off an old uh, wagon we had in our garage. And uh, they also uh, sort of leaned me back in the chair a little bit, which made me feel a little more secure. So after that uh, was taken care of, it became lots of fun. and. Uh, I have enjoyed marching band from the word go. It was a great, great ride, great five seasons. The reactions we got from the majority, if not all, were uh, they really saw them as a father-son team. 
Uh, and the, a lot of reactions were about the bond of the father and son. It wasn't necessarily a look at what they're doing that's amazing, but it's the fact that there was a father-son team uh, that, that I think m grabbed most people's attention in my eyes. The, Patrick is a great musician, and along with the other bandmates, it was, he's, he's a great, makes a great contribution, co contribution to the band. Uh, but for the public's eyes, um, they saw them as a two-man team. In a moment, we'll hear from Patrick Henry about how his disability affects his quality of life. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. Patrick Henry Hughes is an uplifting and inspiring young man who has a tremendous impact on all who know him. He doesn't expect people to treat him differently, and in turn they treat him with kindness and respect. Brad Carlson, one of Patrick's classmates at the University of Louisville, noticed how students would interact with Patrick on campus. To me, I feel like he's kind of like a local celebrity around here. People see him, they always say hi to him, he says hi back, and I mean, when, they see, when you see him, you definitely know who he is. Cameron, what's it been like growing up in this goofy family? Oh, it's been great, you know. I couldn't ask for anything more. Uh, they're the best family in the world, and I really appreciate Patrick here and uh, both my parents. It, they've just made life the best. So what do you like best about your big brother, Patrick? Uh, I like how even though he, he has disabilities, he doesn't see them as disabilities. He pretends he's just a normal, a normal kid, normal adult now. So it's the best thing about him. In today's society, a lot of children, had they been diagnosed within the womb with Patrick's disabilities, are most often aborted. Can you imagine life without Patrick? Absolutely not. No. What a horrible horrible fate we would have dealt ourselves and and hundreds of millions of people around the world had we not had Patrick and people who meet Patrick he's always had this incredible ability to disarm people and and really touch them in, in a way I think many of them maybe have never been touched by another person and to have you know not only cheated ourselves out of that but to have robbed the world of such a blessing just because it, it wasn't what we wanted or how we wanted things to be. I cannot think of a worse mistake we could have made. As a woman, we aspire to have kids. Like, I don't know, I'd rather do that than anything. <laughs> so um, it, it can be heartbreaking to find something out like that. And um, knowing Patrick and getting to know that it can be something that you can deal with, it has made me think twice because I before said, well, I just wouldn't want to deal with that. I would either abort the baby or give the baby up. But now knowing what blessings that can come from it, I'd be crazy, so. I have always um, thought it a tragedy, or a travesty maybe, that kids aren't born that are in, in Patrick's condition. But the fact that I've had this opportunity to work with him, I guess is even more compelling. Uh, the, for Patrick, the marching band thing, that, that was been my experience. But what a wonderful musician. And, and now he's thinking about being a, 
a translator for her, you know, overseas. Uh, and who knows? He could be the next president. It's, there's no stopping him. But there could have been a stopping him. But now there's no stopping him. Patrick, would you say your disabilities have detracted from your quality of life in any way? I would uh, have to say no, my, uh, they have not uh, detracted from my life. As a matter of fact, uh, for the, uh, they have been a bit of a blessing in certain ways. This is a story I always like to share because people often ask me how I would describe my quote-unquote disabilities. And I always say not disabilities at all, but more abilities. Uh, as a matter of fact, I actually see blindness more as the ability and sight more as the disability because there are some people with sight who tend to judge others by what they see on the outside, you know, the skin color, the hair length, the hairstyle, the clothing they wear, but I don't see that. I only see that which is within a person. Coming up, we'll hear the Hughes advice for parents and families who may be in a similar situation. Look around you. Every day, heroes abound in our country. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. We'll tackle challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, adoption, and abstinence, and show that every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. In today's society, if Patrick Henry's condition had been diagnosed in the womb, doctors may likely have advised his parents to abort the pregnancy. But Patrick and Patricia know that would have been a terrible decision. They can only hope parents and families learn from their remarkable story and see the blessings that can come from challenging situations. What advice as parents would you have for somebody who may be watching this and is facing that decision they have found out recently that their unborn child has some disabilities and they're getting pressure from the medical community to terminate that pregnancy. My advice would be to seek out somebody different in the medical community who would encourage them to, to have their child and to show them stories, to tell them stories about what their baby might be able to do or, or something versus what their baby can't do. Uh, and, you know, doc and doctors are human. I mean, they're just human, they're not God. I mean, they, 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 they have the knowledge, they have the, the technology, but when it comes down to it, it's, it's really just a guess. I mean, they, educated guess, but they don't know 100% for sure, you know, what the outcome's gonna be. Do you think the world would be better off with or without Patrick? Definitely with, with. <laughs> yeah. Definitely with. He inspires people, flat out, he inspires people. People wouldn't have been inspired if they hadn't seen him. Even the like ones said, that don't know him? Even the ones that don't know him, like she, exactly like she said, even if you just hear the story about this Louisville band kid who's faced with these disabilities, what he does, even if you don't know him, it's very inspiring. What do you think Patrick has taught you most in life? Uh, he's taught me to never stop, you know, always Keep pushing for your dreams and do what you want to do. Just keep going for it and you'll eventually get there. Can you imagine life without your big brother? No, life would be so different and, well, I honestly wouldn't be as popular as I am now, so he's a real blessing. What I've learned, in, in it's a great thing because I have three kids and my three kids have all been around Patrick and, and now I look at my three kids go to other kids that are disabled without any hesitancy. I, I say look beyond the wheelchair. Uh, look, look at who's in the wheelchair and what they have to offer. For example, Patrick is a great musician. Who wouldn't want him, that person, in, in their marching band? Let everybody um, rise to their ability. Give them the opportunity to do it whatever that may be. And for it may be sitting on the sidelines. That may be the best that it can happen for somebody, but give them that opportunity. 
don't shut the door. Would you base somebody's worth on what they can or cannot do? No. Mm -mm. Well. Why not? Because just because you can't do this on one hand doesn't mean you can't be phenomenal at something else. Yeah. I think a person's worth is not what they can or cannot do, but what how they can touch others' lives. I think we're all very much interconnected. And I think I think your true worth is not in, you know, the size of your home or the number of cars you have or what your status is, but but truly how you move other people. Because your contribution to mankind. Absolutely. I mean you can you can be a person who is you know, has next to nothing, but, but you can you can save lives. We all have that ability to touch people and, and not know it. And you don't know who you're affecting in a positive way and, and who you're really making a difference with just by being nice or a friendly word. So I think our, our I think it's hard to measure each of our our worths as individuals. You just have to trust that uh, I think